so, you know, there was a scene with you on the phone. Mm -hmm. Then you show up to Craig's house, Mm -hmm. and Nia Long is coming out. You know, you guys have that little exchange. Then Craig works it out with you, and you're in your car. And he asked for the money, mm-hmm. and he was you're about you're about to give it to him. And then Felicia shows up, <laughs> and I, I actually I actually interviewed uh, Angela Means. It's normal for her to to borrow small appliances. Like, why is everyone tripping? Like, right. like I've never asked to use your blender. <laughs> All of a sudden, I asked to use your microwave. You tripping? <laughs> You tripping? <laughs> That's a baby. You know, everyone. I don't know what your question is. You just gotta give me a rundown of what happened in the movie. I remember the movie. I was there. And I'm just playing, but really, um, I don't know what the question. But I'm just gonna say, you know, that experience for me was legendary because I met Nia through Arnell, and this is just how life works. You know, I knew Arnell from college. When I got to L.A., she took me under her wing and introduced me to Nia. Nia took me under her wing. So when I got on set, I had a vet. You know, Nia Long has been in this game since she was like eight. She was on Archie Bunker's place. I was at home. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. A fan of Nia Long. You know, she was a pretty little girl then. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a tootie. You know, I've always been a fan because, you know, I wanted to be, I was in Cleveland I was a singing angel because I wanted to be Shirley Temple. Like I, I, I couldn't tap a lick, you know. Barely, I could sing white people songs. My brother put me in the singing angels, not the singing angels. There's a difference. So you know, I can sing. You know, I, I can hold. You know, but I can't sing. You know, so, but I will try. <laughs> so you know, it's it. It was um. Yeah, so what, what did you ask me about? Well, well I mean, j- just the writing of it was so was so genius. In yes, terms of the, the, the script, realness. The script. I think it was, oh, so so Nia had my back. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I came on set with a veteran actress who had already worked with Cube, you know, who had all of these guys wrapped around her finger. So when I had issues with, lines that I wanted to add or change, Nia would have my back because they'd be like, they'd try me. Because if you're going, you going, you get got, you know. But I find that women that are from Los Angeles not only get more respect, but they understand the game more, the fact that it's just a game, that it is about friendships, it's not about talent. Talent is nice, you know, but um, loyalty, friendships, respect, um, that's a lot more important. And women from Los Angeles, they get that. Whereas the imports, they come in and they make it about the fame and the money and the backstabbing. And that's what turns the game around, you know, but I was blessed enough to work on my first project with LA Natives, you know, so I got a firsthand look at what the game is supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like love. It's supposed to look like this is just a job, a book, pass the blood, take a sip, let's have some fun. We're young and we got a million dollars to make a movie. Yeah. And those relationships that I experienced during the making of that film there's not one person in that film that we don't love and still respect each other. Yeah, the casting on it was brilliant. Well, number one, did you have any idea what Chris Tucker was about to become after doing that movie? Because that was his first acting job, period. Well, no. I knew Chris from Townsend Television. Oh, he was on that? Right. No. Oh, no. No, because Robert didn't see him. I saw Chris. And I used to to be like, and, and I don't know if Chris ever got on there or not, but he used to come around. And I used to be like, oh, you're so cute. I don't get why. And, you're, and he used to make me laugh. You know, but he was like, 
I don't know what you call them. Like, we used to have them at Howard. You know, it was a bunch of folk that was at Howard that didn't go to Howard. That's how Chris <laughs> were, was. He was there, but I don't know why he was there because he wasn't performing. <laughs> but he was funny. And I used to be like, Robert. And I would bring Robert over to him. And I'd be like, Robert, you got to see this guy. And, you know, I think that, you know, bled over into when Chris finally got his opportunity you know, I was an actress and, you know, he, he, you know, people would ask me to help because I, at that time was, there weren't that many trained actresses working on urban independent films. You know, it, there were a lot of rappers, you know, and he was a comedian stand up. So he listened. So yes, I knew, I knew Chris was, was special. I tried to tell Robert and, you know, when I when I saw him there, Chris and I were cool. That was my boy. He'd be like, so. And he, you know, that's what strikes me as someone is going to make it humility. Because anyone can say to you, and Tupac had that same humility. Anyone can say to you, you know, ask you a question. But to genuinely listen to the answer and to grow from it, that, that's special. Well, I interviewed John Witherspoon. Spoon. And uh, he said everyone made $5,000 on that movie. Five grand. Everybody else on the show, they're going to say they made more money. Ain't nobody made no money on that movie. Okay. 5000 Did Chris Tucker do, do about the same, you think? About the same thing. About the same, yeah. A.J. Johnson said he didn't get anything. I didn't get no 5000 You got less than 5000 Yeah, Yeah. What'd you get? They paid me gas money to get up and then back home. You did it for free? Uh, basically. Did you get a paycheck? For that movie? Yeah, I was signed with William Morris. Oh, okay. So you made sure you got your money. I didn't make sure. They made they, sure. They made sure you got your it, money. You know, I was signed with William Morris and uh, Three Arts Entertainment. And I was signed with the same people that F. Gary Gray was signed with. Okay. So, you know, I'm finding out in Hollywood, um, because I don't have literary representation, that you will get ganked if you don't have. Someone fighting for you. Such a 90s term, ganked. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that one that in a while. That's real. <laughs> I remember that word. Okay. So the movie comes out. And, well, before it even comes out, I remember John Witherspoon kind of told me how, uh, you know, they basically had gotten the funding themselves. Ice Cube and, you know, his crew had gotten the funding themselves to do the whole movie, but New Line Cinema convinced them at the end for them to like take an ownership stake in it and you know them you know they were going to take all the risk in case the movie did bad ice cube was going to put up the money himself right but new line cinema talked him out of they it. said look ain't no sense you losing two million dollars the movie bomb we did take the hit the movie grow 300 million he could have gotten all and, that and they're not going to come back and say we made a look we made a lot of money gonna give you all the bonus that ain't some bullshit that don't happen in hollywood how did it feel to be such a key character in that movie. Which is, you know, when you look at, you know, for lack of a better word, like hood hood films, this is really at the top of the pile. You know what I mean? Like, especially, I mean, hood comedies, most people put this as the number one. I think living in Los Angeles has been one of the most humbling experiences in my life because I'm in a bubble. I've always lived in a bubble. I went from living in the suburbs to going to Howard. It's a bubble. It's in the hood, but it's in a bubble. It's own little campus bubble to coming to Hollywood, which, like I said, I came here, I relocated with a job, which puts me in a bubble. So I was always under the studio system. Now, the studio system is different than it was when the old school studio system started, but by being by coming out here with a job brought out here by Fox I was always taken care of I was always protected I was always looked after so I've never really you know I I I I've never really seen what the real Hollywood is you know and I started seeing it you know I it it's 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 not what was your question? Well, what was it like to have that film just blow up? It, oh, it's it's hard. 
because okay so my point was living in a bubble i never really knew i was famous you know because i never went anywhere no one ever said to me oh you're the girl i didn't know so mm. it kept me humble and especially because everybody's famous in california you know they're not gonna let you know you're famous because they're famous so i never knew i was famous and i would I, until i started to see people walking around looking just like the character that i was playing and i and i was at a club one night and i was waiting in line and these girls about three of them came up and they were dressed just like joy i mean like long, long, the braids the long braids the nails everything <laughs> And I said to the bouncer, you're not going to let me in? Ask them who I am. They're dressed like me. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> and I didn't get in. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is this? So I think people saved my life. So many people, you know, whatever was going on in that party, that bouncer did not want me in. So I was like, I'm going home. And, and I used to have an all the time, like, there'd be these parties and they'd be just off the chain and somebody would steal my tickets to go to the party. So I didn't get to go, you know. And I'd be like, oh, God. 